Hi everyone. So let's discuss a very important question where we have to find the polar moment of inertia of a circular section. And also using the result, we have to find the moment of inertia of a circular section about its diameter. So there are two parts. The first part is we need to find the polar moment of inertia of the circular section. And the second part is we have to find the moment of inertia of same circular section about its diameter. Okay. So here if you can see we have drawn a circular section. So for this circular section friends we need to find its polar moment of inertia. So the polar moment of inertia is basically the moment of inertia about this axis which is called as polar axis friends. So the polar axis means an axis which is perpendicular to the plane of the section and passing through centroids. So it is going to pass through the centroid of the section and it is perpendicular to this particular section. So let's say C is the centroid of this particular circular section and this axis is perpendicular to the plane of circular section. So we call it as polar axis and the moment of inertia about this axis is called as polar moment of inertia. Generally we denote it by IE and since it is centroid I will call it as IC. Okay. So let's see how to find the polar moment of inertia of circular section. To find the polar moment of inertia friends I have considered a thin ring. So I have taken this ring at distance r from the center of the circular disc okay and the thickness of ring is very small so i'm going to call it as infinite decimally small thickness and that is dr fine so i have considered a thin ring having a very small area so area of this ring is going to be very small friends so i may call it as the area of this ring as very small that is da okay so i have considered a ring shape small area da at distance r from the axis of rotation which is called as polar axis. So I can find out the moment of inertia of ring. I can say that the moment of inertia of thin ring. So the ring is very small. Since area of the ring is very small. So this moment of inertia also will be very small. I am going to call as di. This is the moment of inertia of ring. And by definition it is distance square times area da. So we have got the moment of inertia of the ring. Now we would like to find the moment of inertia of entire disk. So if you want to find the moment of inertia of entire disc, we need to integrate the small moment of inertia starting from this point at center to this point which is the periphery of the circular section. So I can say at this particular point friends the value of r would be 0 here right and at this particular point the value of r will be the radius of the circular section let me call it as capital R okay. So this disc has the radius capital R friends we can say right. So therefore, I can say the moment of inertia of circular section having radius capital R is, so how, how we can find out, we are, we are going to integrate the small moment of inertia that is I am going to integrate it from radius equal to 0 to radius equal to capital R and the small moment of inertia is basically R square dA. Okay, so we need to find the value of dA. So what is the value of dA? So dA we can say the area of this thin ring we can say. So area of this thin ring can be simply the length of the ring times thickness of it. So its length is friends 2 pi r and thickness is, as we know that thickness is dr friends, so it is dr. So the dA which is the area of the ring is 2 pi r dr that I am going to substitute here. So this value you can easily find out friends from 0 to r, r square as it is here and dA is, we have already got it here, 2 pi r dr. Okay. Now we need to simplify this. So if you look at here, so if you look at here, here r is there and r square is there. So r into r square is going to be r cube and 2 pi is constant, it is going to come outside friends. So therefore this value will be, I can take 2 pi outside here and then integration 0 to capital R as it is. And here r into r square is going to be r cube dr. If I further simplify this, this is the moment of inertia of disk we are calculating. Let me call it as ic. This is the polar moment of inertia about its centroidal axis. ic friends. This is going to be r. The integration of r cube is r raised to 4 by 4. So it is 2 pi as it is. r raised to 4 by 4 and limit from 0 to capital R. So if I simplify this further, 2 pi will be as it is and then inside we will be having upper limit is capital R raised to 4 by 4 
and the inner the smaller limit is zero so it is zero as it is if i simplify these trends i am going to get so 4 and this is 2 so pi by 2 r is to 4 it is pi by 2 r is to 4 so i can simply write down here the polar moment of inertia of circular section that is ic friends equals pi r is to 4 by 2 so we have got the expression of polar moment of inertia of circular section that is pi times radius raised to 4 by 2 Now in the next part, friends, we have to calculate the moment of inertia about its diameter. So let's see how we can find out the moment of inertia about its diameter. So we have got here the center of the circular section is C. You can say here, and the radius of circular section is R, friends. And we have got the polar moment of inertia of this section that is I C equal to pi R raised to four by two. This much already we have got. Now we have to find. So friends, now we have to find the moment of inertia of circular section about its diameter. So we would like to find the moment of inertia of this section, which is circular section about a diametral axis. Okay. So I'll draw an axis along its diameter. We can say this is diameter, friends. So I'll draw one axis like this. Let me call this axis as diametral axis. The moment of inertia about this diametral axis let me call it as I x. Let me draw one more axis perpendicular to this axis, this axis friends. Maybe like this we can draw it. This axis is also diameter friends. So the moment of inertia about this axis will be I y. So these two axes are perpendicular to each other and they are passing through same point. So here if you see I have got two mutually perpendicular axes in the plane of the circular section. This I am calling as I x and this I am calling as I y. so according to perpendicular axis theorem we have already understood that the moment of inertia about this axis will be sum of the moment of inertia about these two axes okay so i can write down the moment of inertia about this axis that is ic will be equal to the sum of moment of inertia about these two axes that is ix plus iy but if you see geometrically ix and iy both are equal both are equal and they are along the diameter these two axes these two moment of inertia they are both are along the diameter okay so they are equal because they are along the diameter they are along the diameter of circular section so it is very clear that ix and iy both are equal so since ix and iy equal we can write down ix is same as iy that is same as the moment of inertia along diameter let me call it okay So now let's substitute the value of i x equal to i y here. So we can get a very simple outcome that is i c equals. So instead of i y, I am going to write i x. So two times so that will be i x plus i x, and that is same as two times i x. For that matter, I can also write down that is same as two times of i y. Okay. So i x and i y both are same, and that is same as two times the moment of inertia along diameter. So I can Conclude from here that the moment of inertia along I x. If I take this and this term, so I x will be I c by two, and that is same as I c. We already got friends. Pi r is to four by two, so it is going to be pi r is to four by two, and then one more two is going to come this one. So it is going to be pi r raised to four by four, so that is pi r raised to four by four. So this is I x, and then similarly we'll be getting I y also same. That is pi r is to four by four. Therefore, moment of inertia of circular section about its diameter equals pi r is to four by four. Thank you very much.